What's up all you English learners out there? This is lesson number 32. And in this lesson, we are going to be learning about a few new verbs that have similar meanings, but they're used in different situations. So stay tuned. Okay, we're gonna look at four of them today. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we have four. So generally guys, these are words that are easy to use and to remember, but they can be confusing for those who are trying to learn English. So you have to pay close attention to them, okay? So let's go ahead and jump right in. The first verb that we're going to look at today is one that you've probably already seen by now. The verb is to happen, okay? To happen. Uh, when we use this word in English, we are usually using it for situations that uh, cannot be expected or they cannot be anticipated okay but we also use it to talk about previous times or um, a sort of like vague memory that we have okay it's usually used in informal speech and we use it for informal content okay and it's also used for accidental or unplanned events okay now let's look at some examples using the verb to happen okay for example what happened to you what happened to you we're talking about an accidental event or maybe an unplanned event you're asking what happened to you what happened to a person something happened and it was unexpected it was not anticipated the store happened to be closed when I got there okay the store happened to be closed when I got there again. It's not anticipated. People didn't expect the store to be closed, but it is. And so you say, the store happened to be closed when I got there. Okay. I hate when that happens. I hate when that happens, okay? When something, you know, takes place and you don't expect it. Okay, I hate when that happens. Then you can say, don't worry, that happens to everyone. Okay, so that happens to everyone. This incident happens to everybody. We all deal with it. We all go through the same experience. Next we have, it had happened when I left the house. Okay, notice that we have had happened, past participle here. Okay, it had happened when I left the house. Okay. The car accident happened downtown. Okay. The car accident happened downtown. And finally, what is going to happen tomorrow? So here we have the infinitive form. We have to happen, just like right here. Infinitive, to happen. What is going to happen tomorrow? Okay. What is going to happen tomorrow? All right, guys, so this is the verb to happen. Make sure you pay close attention to this one. This is a good one to memorize, all right, because you're gonna use it all the time. And uh, now we're going to look at a verb that is similar to the verb to happen, all right, but uh, it is used for expected events that happen on a certain date. And it's also used when people talk about discoveries and ideas. Okay, um, the verb here is to occur, all right? And it's very similar to this one. So to occur is very similar to happen, but when you use to happen, you don't sometimes expect it, okay? But to occur, yeah, it's more about you expect something to happen or we use it in more formal conversations or we use it to talk about discoveries and our ideas what we think okay uh, it's used in more formal conversations like i said and oftentimes people use it when they suddenly realize something in a specific moment like oh it occurred to me ba -ba 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 -ba. okay let's look at some examples oh, okay here we go it occurred to me that i forgot my keys at work so right here it occurred to me we use that expression when something comes into our head right it's like you're just thinking and then oh ding 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 ah it occurred to me at that moment that da, 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 da. it occurred to me that i forgot my keys at work so in this case maybe you're driving home right you're driving and you're like oh i forgot my keys at home or at work, I'm sorry, I forgot my house keys at work. 
All right? All right, next. The murder occurred the night before yesterday. Okay, in this one, we're talking about, well, it sounds formal, okay? It sounds like something you would read in a newspaper or something that you would hear on the news, okay? Or maybe a politician said this because we have the verb occur. The murder occurred the night before yesterday. You can also say the murder happened the night before yesterday. That's more informal, okay? You cannot say it happened to me that. We don't say that at all. You cannot say that. You only can say it occurred to me that. Okay? But the murder occurred the night before yesterday. The murder happened the night before yesterday. I think occurred sounds better, personally. I think occurred sounds really good in this case. All right? Next. Nobody knows when the next earthquake will occur. Again, this is more formal. Okay? Um, this is something that you'll hear in the news or maybe in a magazine. You'll read this in the newspaper. Uh, nobody knows when the next earthquake will occur. Okay, you can also say happen. Nobody knows when the next earthquake will happen. That's used uh, more in like everyday speech with your friends, with your family. This is something that you would more, more or less read. All right, next. Fires during the summer are reoccurring, okay? Fires during the summer are reoccurring. So in this case, we're not using it as a verb, all right? Um, you can see that we have RE, which we're talking about repetition here. So fires during the summer are reoccurring, okay? Now, you'll see this word, reoccurring, okay? It's a noun, and it's used to describe something that happens over and over and over and over and over again, okay? So that's why we say reoccurring, okay? And finally, for the verb to occur, it says shark sightings occur off the coast of Florida. Shark sightings occur off the coast of Florida. Okay, now the coast is where the land meets water. Okay, so it's where the ocean is or the sea is. Okay, so on the west coast of Florida, you have the Gulf. Okay, and on the other coast, you have the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, so shark sightings occur off the coast of Florida, which happens, you know. Okay. Um, you can also say shark sightings happen off the coast of Florida, but that's something that you would say. This is something that you would read, and this sounds more natural. Uh, somebody would say this in an informal conversation. Shark sightings occur off the coast of Florida. People will say that, okay? Uh, our next verb here that we have is to take place, okay? And to take place is used to talk about planned events like ceremonies, weddings, uh, um, bar mitzvahs, like birthdays, meeting, whatever you have planned, okay? Let's look at some examples. The meeting will take place Friday at 2 p.m. The meeting will take place Friday at 2 p.m. Okay, so you're talking about a scheduled event. So you're talking about a meeting maybe at work or maybe you have a meeting for something uh, with a realtor or maybe you have a, an appointment with somebody but anyways in any case the meeting okay or your appointment or whatever will take place it will happen Friday at 2 p.m. okay uh, this sounds good sometimes you'll hear people say the meeting will happen Friday at 2 p.m. but not really guys it sounds really good when you say it like that but it doesn't sound good when you use the verb to happen, okay? The meeting will take place Friday at 2 p.m. That sounds good. The wedding, when two people get married, you have the man, right, the groom, and then you have the bride, who is the woman. The wedding will, the wedding took place, so we're talking about the past, okay? We're talking about something that already happened, it happened in the past. The wedding took place last Sunday. See, last Sunday. And then finally, many changes have taken place over the years. We have have, and then we have the past participle. Have taken place. Hmm. You remember from the previous lesson? 
Many changes have taken place over the years. Okay? All right, guys. So next we have the verb to turn out. Now, to turn out means to happen in a particular way or um, to have a particular result of something, okay, or in something, especially a result that is not expected. The result is actually unexpected, okay? You don't anticipate it. So um, let's go ahead and look at these examples and you'll probably understand it quickly. All right, it turns out he isn't who he says he is. He is a spy, okay? So it turns out he isn't who he says he is. He is a spy. It turns out is like, oh wow, he is not who he says he is. He's a spy. He is not here for, you know, a job here. He is spying on us. Okay, it turns out. It's like a revelation like, oh, it turns out that da 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 da. Okay? It turns out that we were wrong. Right? You say something over and over and over again. You think you're right, right? But you're like, ah. Oh. Turns out that we were wrong, okay? We're not right, we're wrong. All right, so you don't expect these things, okay? They're not anticipated. And finally, don't worry, everything will turn out all right. All right means okay, so don't worry, everything will turn out okay. Don't worry, everything will turn out all right. Okay, so we have turn out. It will happen, okay? It will occur. You know, things will fall in their place. It will turn out all right. So you can use it when you're shocked about something like, oh, what, really, that happened? Or you can use it just to talk about the future. Things will turn out, things will fall in their place like a puzzle, right? Things will happen the way that they're supposed to, okay? It's, uh, it's destiny. Things will turn out the way that they're supposed to. All right, so guys, make sure you practice these four words to happen, to occur, to take place, and to turn out. They're pretty similar. Remember, informal conversations, formal conversations, um, talking about planned events and meetings and stuff like that, and then to turn out when things are like not at not expected and you're like, whoa, I was wrong. It turns out that I was wrong. It turns out that he isn't who he says he is. He is a spy. It's talking about things that are unexpected. And we can use all these in a variety of situation, situations. So you just have to listen to English speakers so you can get more accustomed to how people use these words, okay? Anyways, guys, that's it for this lesson. I hope to see you in the next lesson. In any case, I hope you have a good day and see you next time. Bye.